Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the rainy Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be feeling trapped by the narcissist. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So when you were in the relationship, many times you felt smothered. You felt like you weren't being heard because you were experiencing toxicity, which includes gaslighting, the silent treatment, rage fits, blame shifting, triangulation, etc. And many times you felt like you could not identify what you were up against because remember, you weren't taught narcissism 101 in school. So the narcissist was toying with you when you were in that relationship. And if the relationship lasted one minute up to a lifetime, it is one minute too long because there is no time for anybody to be tethered to a narcissist once they've identified that narcissism is prevalent on the planet. But that was when you were in the relationship. Now, post-relationship, when you feel like you're trapped by the narcissist, this happens frequently. It happens each and every day on the planet, and I'll give you illustrations. Let's say that you have divorced the narcissist, and they have, of course, relocated very similar, very close to your house or still they stayed in the same town or area. They do that on purpose, by the way. The reason they do that is to still draw your energy away from you, to have you thinking about them, to have you not going down certain roads, to have you not going to certain places where you used to eat together or attend events, etc. Because the narcissist at their core, they are an energy vampire and they want you to not live your best life. So example, like I shared, if you were married to the narcissist and then you got divorced, the narcissist relocated in your same community, which is what they do very frequently, it's to keep you stuck, to keep you trapped, and to, to tell you, hey, I'm going nowhere, and you're gonna have to deal with it. And that's not a fun thing. It's not a pleasant experience, to say the least. That is why I suggest on the channel frequently, if you have the ability, and you're not tethered to the narcissist anyway at all, if you have the ability to relocate, I would strongly suggest doing that. But again, that's for a whole different video. We need to create an exit plan to help you get from where you are currently, perhaps even being trapped, to where you want to be. But when you're trapped post-narcissistic relationship, that's one example. Because yeah, now you've gone through the process of divorce and you you are no longer tethered or connected to the narcissist, but they're still acting like everything's puppies and rainbows and they're just living their best life, or so it appears. Now remember, the narcissist is doing anything but living their best life. What they've done most likely is glommed onto a new source of supply and that person is getting what you used to get, which is the toxicity and the abuse. But the narcissist will make it seem as if they are living their best life post-relationship. And that is why many times the narcissist will attempt to hoover people. Maybe they drop off a package in front of your house or condominium. Maybe they drive by your area. Maybe they have to they do their dry cleaning right next to your town or your little area where you live in when they live 15 miles away. This is all to disrupt your energy. Every single thing the narcissist has ever done was to disrupt your energy and to take your resources from you. And your peace of mind is a huge resource. It's a huge thing to have. So go back in time when you were in the narcissistic relationship. Did you have peace of mind frequently? You really didn't because you were always wondering when the next shoe would drop, if the narcissist would blame you for something you did or didn't do, if you would be triangulated and you didn't even know what that meant back there, if the narcissist would keep their word and do what they told you they would do, if they would be on time or if they would make you wait, or if you got them a birthday gift, would it be accepted and would it be good enough? You never knew what you were gonna get when you were with these people, but you didn't know what you were up against. So now feeling trapped by the narcissist post relationship, there are many different ways you can feel trapped and my hope is you are not feeling trapped. One is if you're still caught up in the trauma bond, that is a very challenging experience to go through to say the least, but you will have to break that. You will have to go no contact and block the narcissist, etc. You'll have to remove anybody who is one step away from the narcissist, who again could draw the narcissist information to you or vice versa. In other words, they could walk in your door one day and just talk to you and say, oh, I saw so-and-so and they were asking about you and that's the narcissist and you're like, oh my gosh, you have to be kidding me. We talked about this. I don't wanna know anything about them. These are all examples of how you may feel trapped when you're, you may feel trapped by the narcissist. Another way is the memories. All of the memories that you had in the holidays and the birthdays and barbecues, et cetera, that you shared with them and those people that attended those events. Many times people in the community are the people that paid for or provided the services or the food, et cetera, for those events because the narcissist likes your money more than their money. But when you did that, you, you thought that you were in a kind, loving, stable, healthy relationship with the narcissist and you invited most of the people that they wanted to attend. And you probably invited some people that you wanted to attend if the narcissist approved 
But once you got discarded or once that relationship ended, where were all those people that you attended the barbecues and Christmas and holidays and your birthday with? They all disappeared. Almost each and every one of them disappeared because probably they were consuming the smear campaign, which is what the narcissist was doing, which was telling flat out lies about you and not telling the truth about that they are the toxic person, it's not you. But other people that listened to the smear campaign, they were toxic themselves. You just didn't know it back then. You couldn't see the signs because you were in that relationship too deep. And then there are other people who will watch from afar and maybe they do know what's going on, but they don't want to become the next target, so they won't say anything. There are very few people, <coughs> excuse me, who will stick around post-relationship to be there for you. And those people that do stick around, many times they'll get burned out because they don't understand what narcissism is. They don't know what it feels like to be trapped by the narcissist. Let's give you another example. This is when you were in the relationship with them. And there are thousands and thousands of examples. But another example would be when you're in the relationship with them, maybe you relocated, maybe you're from a certain part of the world and the narcissist said, hey, no, let's move here. Let's get, 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 get a fresh start. Let's create a family or whatever. Well, when they did that, what did they do? They isolated you. And after a period of time, when the narcissist perhaps was financially abusing you or gaslighting you or whatever they were doing behind the four uh, walls of your house in a strange town or country you lived in, you felt trapped and you were trapped. This was by design. That's why frequently the narcissist, when you it's a romantic setting, they will have you fall in love with them. Then I'm fast forwarding that part, but basically they'll give you a love bomb. You'll fall in love with them. They won't fall in love with you because they can't fall in love. And they will say, hey, let's live here. Then you live in that location for a period of time. And usually, or at times, they want to relocate after a couple years because the narcissist can't sit still and because they're trying to get you further and further away from your support system to trap you. Now, I've mentioned the trauma bond. I've mentioned um, when you relocate and other examples. But another one, let's say you have children with the narcissist or stepkids. Well, did the narcissist parental alienate you from them? Or are, if you're a grandparent, are you allowed to see your kids' kids? Probably not. And you feel trapped again. You feel stuck. Because who in their right mind would not allow their own flesh and blood to see the kids? A narcissist. Because they can do it. And because they know that you have the ability to love. And they know that they don't have the ability to love. And they don't want you to create a strong, healthy bond with the kids or the grandkids. That is why many times these people, i.e. the narcissist, they reveal themselves after they have children. Not always, but at times they do. Just think about all of the times that all the, the people you may or may not know of and, and their kids have kids and the grandparents can't see the, the grandkids and you would always be scratching your head wondering like who would do that what's the problem there what's wrong well it's probably because their kid is a narcissist or they are under the wraps of a narcissist meaning they married a narcissist and they are in the zombie like trance like state the narcissistic fog where they're existing and they're doing whatever their spouse is telling them to do it works so many different ways and I hope you understand what I'm sharing with you in this video. When you feel trapped by the narcissist, another example would be you're trying to divorce the narcissist and it's being dragged out longer and longer and you thought that you could come to some kind of intelligent, recreational, uh, stable agreement with them, meaning you would split the custody of everything 50-50 or whatever the rules are in your jurisdiction, but that's not what the narcissist wants to do. What they wanna do is they wanna take as much from you as they can and they want to slowly bleed you drive your resources they don't want you healing they don't want you advancing they want you they want you begging to get out of that relationship with them at times and that's what we don't want what we don't want is the narcissist to have control over us any longer and so my hope is that if you are trying to divorce the narcissist that you have a good support system and that you are playing above the uh, above the line you're, you're doing everything you possibly can to expedite that divorce and split the assets but you need to know in the back that the narcissist most likely will be trying to drag that out as long as possible to try and inflict more and more damage to you and the kids and the real estate and the house and all those things because that's what the narcissist does. But remember, each and every time the narcissist tries to do more and more damage to you and the kids and everybody, they're doing damage to themselves too. They don't realize it and they actually don't care, but they are. Because what they're doing is they're having people look around them and say, what's going on here? What's the common denominator? Why can't I see the grandkids or the kids or why are who's the person that keeps on saying bad things about me and how come i can't pay bills etc it's the common denominator is the narcissist and more and more people around the globe are becoming awakened and aware educated and empowered and they understand that all the baggage from the narcissistic relationship that was dumped on them was the baggage of the narcissist and that is why so frequently people now 
are understanding that they don't want energy vampires flying around them. They don't want to be trapped one minute longer in the relationship or one minute longer in an environment where they don't belong. They are creating exit plans. They are learning and becoming educated and empowered. This is a good thing. A good thing is to remove yourself from the toxic narcissistic relationship as soon as you possibly can once you've identified that that's what it is. But when you're trapped by the narcissist, this is what they do to you each and every time. Think about when you would go on vacation. Maybe you went on vacation or a holiday somewhere with the narcissist and maybe they just stranded you there and left you there. And maybe they left you without a credit card. You may say, well, that's a little extreme, a little graphic, Andrew. Well, who would do that? Well, I've heard of that happening more than one time and it's not just on vacations. It's people being removed from the car and just dropped off and hey, I'm gonna, and the narcissist will disappear. Because the narcissist doesn't care about people. What they care about is themselves. And they care about inflicting as much damage upon people as they possibly can. And what the narcissist does and did want with you is they did want to keep you trapped. They did want to keep you stuck. But what happened is along the way, you found that light bulb moment. You found that needle in a haystack, which is the narcissistic abusive cycle. And you did the research and you did the homework and you studied and you journaled and you meditated and you had a therapist and you watched videos. You slowed your life down, you processed things, and you realized that all of these things that happened to you when you were in the relationship, they were at the hands of the narcissist. And the narcissist did want to keep you trapped. They did want to use you as a source of supply. They did want to extract all of your resources. They did not want you to heal. They did not want you to grow. They did not want you to see behind the mask. They did not want you to go no, co no contact. They did not want you to find love again. They did not want you to rebuild your life. They did not want your health to return. They did not want your finances to return. They did not want you to reconnect with stable or healthy people in your own family. The narcissist is always playing a mind game. They're always thinking a couple steps ahead of how to blow up relationships, how to enter relationships, how to twist the knife deeper and deeper, and how to cause as much damage and inflict as much misery upon unsuspecting people as possible. Now again, you may say that's a little graphic, Andrew. It's not. If you were in a narcissistic relationship, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And drop comments below. These people are shapeshifters. They're dark energy forces, and they are all over the globe. They are interchangeable. They all play from the same playbook. It's almost as if they landed from outer space and they were taught a whole different set of values or lack thereof, and they walk through life like a bull in a china shop trying to disrupt people's lives and blow up people's relationships and take whatever they can. But eventually, each and every one of these people gets discovered. Each and every one of them, people figure out. Maybe it's not everybody in their network of friends or family, but people are wising up and they're understanding that there are, is a lot of toxicity in the planet or on the planet. And if you have the ability to love, this is a side note, you're a very fortunate person. You know what love is. You know how powerful love is. And if you have empathy, it's the same thing. Those are two qualities that the narcissist does not have. That's why they look for those qualities in other people. And they try to keep these people repressed and under the thumb or the spell of the narcissist. And that's when you felt trapped. Think about what I'm sharing with you. Financially, how about that one? Were you trapped financially? Maybe before you met the narcissist, you had a lot of money or a good amount of money, enough to live on, and you had a retirement fund, etc. Well, the narcissist made sure they blew through all of your money because again, as I mentioned, what they like more than money is your money. And they claim that they didn't have money or etc. or we could do this or we should buy a bigger house or car or whatever. And you did it because maybe you were in love or maybe you were a kind, loving, stable, healthy person. You wanted to contribute to the betterment of your life and maybe someone else's, maybe the, uh, the person, the narcissist. Well, once the money ran out, so did the narcissist. When you no longer had resources to provide a certain lifestyle for the narcissist, they were gone. They were onto the new supply quicker than you could count to 10 because they were grooming the new supply behind your back. Maybe even in front of you, you just didn't see it. But when the, peop when people, when the narcissist places people in the trauma bond and you're being devalued each and every day and you're working for somebody who's trying to punish you for being you, it is not a pleasant experience. It's not a, a good chapter of your life, but that's something that happened and you felt trapped and you felt isolated and you felt alone and you felt not being heard and you felt, why me? What's going on? I don't get this. I can't wrap my head around why this person who claimed that they love me is doing so much damage to me. They were doing it to you because they could and they were doing it to you to toy with you and they were doing it to you because that was giving them supply. And you may say, well, Andrew, what is supply? Well, for the new people in the community and on the channel, supply is what the narcissist needs to control people and to regulate themselves and to give them a boost to go through life. Supply they can get from a pet, from a job, from a car, from a house, from clothing, 
from verbally abusing you, from ghosting you, from gaslighting you. Supply is something that the narcissist needs. They need it the exact same way that you br you breathe the air that you breathe. And back then, you didn't know what supply was. Why would you? Again, you weren't taught this in school, but you're a stable, healthy person. You want the best for people. You want the betterment for the planet. You want to build and create and grow. The narcissist wants to take, destroy, and manipulate. And this is exactly how they go through life, from person to person and relationship to relationship. So I've covered a lot of ground here in this video, but when you're stuck, when you feel trapped by the narcissist, it is not a good experience at all. It's not a pleasant period of your life, but you need to understand to slow your life down, to really get that pen and paper out and write down the pro con list of that relationship when you were in it with the narcissist, or maybe you're still in it, and write the benefits of the relationship, if there were any, and write down the not so good things or the negative things, the cons, and really, really write that a few times and your eyes will be opened and you will say to yourself, wow, I was manipulated, I was fooled, I was settling for breadcrumbs, I was settling for less than, I was the walk-in apology, I was the, the ATM machine, I was the money pit, I was the unpaid helper, I was the chauffeur, I did everything I possibly could to benefit this person and I thought that this person loved me but they didn't, they don't and they never will. And now slowly I am rebuilding myself, I'm getting the wisdom, I'm applying the tools, I am really understanding that this person almost took me down for the count, but they didn't, and I am no longer trapped. I am removing myself from that trap, i.e. the trauma bond. I am removing myself from their vicinity. I am going no contact, and I am healing. And if it takes me X period of time, it doesn't matter, because one minute in a narcissistic relationship is one minute too long, and I need this time now for healing, for slowing my life down, and for processing everything that I went through and understanding and being kind to myself that the relationship wasn't my fault. This person was wearing a mask. They were manipulating me. They told me A, B, and C, and they did X, Y, and Z. And they probably had multiple sources of supply throughout that whole relationship. As a matter of fact, I'm certain they did. And yes, they could have been romantic. Maybe they weren't. But the narcissist is always on the prowl. They're always on the go. They can't sit still. They're always on their smartphones. They're always looking for the next new shiny object. And at one point in time, that was you. The narcissist will slither away onto the new source of supply. And that person, unfortunately, will be trapped. The difference between you and that person is that you're in the community and you're getting educated and you're becoming awakened and aware. And you understand how serious these relationships are and how much damage they do to people. The new supply, again, they're one of three people. They're a recycled source of supply who didn't break the trauma bond or didn't find the needle in a haystack. They're an unsuspecting person that doesn't even know narcissism is prevalent on the planet like you were, or they themselves are a toxic person and the narcissist themselves will be getting played. Either way, that's up to the new supply to figure out or do whatever they do with the narcissist. You were with the narcissist for a period of time, you're no longer there, and you're healing, and you're growing, and you're understanding that you are the priority, and that you, in fact, come first, second, and third. So everyone, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the rainy Carolinas. This is Andrew, namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, no matter where you are on the planet. You are not alone. God bless you all. You are not alone. Take this message to heart. You were trapped. You felt trapped. You felt isolated. Maybe right now that's even how you feel. If you do, take it slowly. Take it one day at a time and continue to move forward each and every day and continue to shed the tears. Let them out. Let your emotions out. If you're experiencing anger, let it out in a healthy way. In other words, don't hurt yourself or don't hurt anybody else. Maybe punch a pillow or something, but get the emotions out and process that this person, the narcissist, they can't change, they won't change, they can't introspect and they won't be accountable and they certainly won't give you closure. They want to keep you stuck, so that's why you have to do the work. That's why you have to reach that pinnacle of indifference, the mountaintop of indifference, if you will, where you no longer care about the narcissist or any people from that period of time of your life because now you understand that those people themselves were toxic, many of them. Many of them didn't check in on you, and many of them are flying monkeys and or enablers, and they're drinking the Kool-Aid from the narcissist. Understand the message. I love you all, God bless you, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. I hope you liked the video. The rain was so much fun. All right, bye everyone.